imagine what it would be like if you got to sit at the feet of Jesus and just listen to what he's saying and hear him and, and learn from him? I got to tell you, when I went to seminary back in the 80s, I thought that's what it was going to be like. I thought I would go to seminary and I would listen to men and women teaching and I'd be on this comfortable little pillow type seat and they would teach me and I would soak it all in. That is not what seminary was like at all. I'm not saying it was horrible. It was hot. There was no air conditioning. It was in Kentucky. And I found myself with so much reading. For each class, and I usually took about four classes at a time, there would be about 10 books for the 15 weeks, and then you had to write a paper on each of the 10 weeks. And I want to remind you that in the 1980s, there was no such thing as computers that we had to type everything out. And I did have an electric computer, but I, if you ever made a mistake, if you couldn't erase it with typing paper, then you had to start all over again. I cannot tell you how many times I typed the same pages over and over again. It is when I got to be a pretty good typist. Well, it wasn't my idyllic view of seminary, but I did learn things, things that I still use and still take part of in my life today. But for the disciples, it was like that. They literally got to walk with Jesus. They literally got to sit and listen to him and ask him questions. Oh my goodness, how precious that would be. As Jesus walked along and trained his disciples in the art of fishing for men, they visited the synagogues of Galilee. And at one point, he sat down on the slopes of a mountain overlooking the northern shore of the Sea of Galilee, and he addressed his disciples. Well, there were people who they had seen at synagogues and who had really begin, begun following him. They saw that he was teaching, and they came too. So a big crowd came out. They wanted to hear what Jesus said. And this is what it says about that time that they were there listening to his sermon in Matthew 5.1. He says, seeing the crowds, he went up on the mountain. And when he sat down, his disciples came to him. So although others were there, his primary audience was the disciples. And this sermon that was delivered in the spring of A.D. 28 is known as the Sermon of the Mount, on the Mount. You've heard about that, right? It meant so much to them that Peter, the very next day, had an experience about fishing. Remember that fishing experience that they had tried to fish and couldn't fish? And Jesus said, go out again. And they had a huge haul of fish and that is where Peter made his decision. Luke 5, 11, it says, When they had brought their boats to shore, they left everything and followed him. So this, during this sermon, this is the parable that Jesus says in Luke 6. No good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit. For each tree is known by its own fruit. Figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good person out of the good treasure of the heart produces good. And the evil person out of evil treasure produces evil. For it is out of the abundance of the heart that the mouth speaks." He's letting us know that where your heart is, that's where your actions and your speaking will come. So he goes on to tell more about two disciples. He's teaching the disciples 
you need to be grounded in what you believe and what you learn. So he goes on and speaks about two disciples from Luke 6, 46 through 49, about two people who, had, uh, who were builders. Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? I will show you what someone is like who comes to me, hears my words, and acts on them. That one is like a man building his house who dug deeply and laid the foundation on rock. When a flood arose, the river burst against that house but could not shake it because it had been well built. But the one who hears and does not act is like a man who built a house on the ground without a foundation. When the river burst against it, it immediately fell, and great was the ruin of that house. The two builders, one who built his house on rock and the second disciple to a foolish builder who built his house on the sand. The house that withstood the rains, floods, winds was the one that was built on the bedrock. The wise builder was looking toward the future and knew that the early rains would come and the Jordan River would overflow its banks and loosen up the hard sand and make it unstable. If the house had no foundation, it was collapse. They recognized this. They had seen this happen before in their world. They knew that this was a true uh, representation. And the foolish builder, on the other hand, thought only of the present, how much work they had to do right then, and they cut the, their workload and did not go down to the bedrock, bedrock. And yet the house would not stand. The, the wise builder was concerned that the house would remain standing, so he built on deep foundation. The wise builder counted the cost and put the time, energy, and effort into a building that had a foundation while the foolish builder took shortcuts and ignored the need for foundation. The application of these two parables is also quite obvious. Jesus intended his disciples to hear the words of these two sermons and obey them. That those sermons back with the Mount, uh, uh, the Sermon on the Mount. He wanted them to follow those teachings. This was the life that Jesus was talking about building their lives on the teaching that he was giving. The wise builder, the wise disciple, building their lives on the lifestyle that Jesus projected through the Sermon on the Mount. And then when the rains and the floods of a hard life of time and testing came, that life would remain firm and strong in the Lord. The serious disciple of the Lord Jesus must put in time, energy, and effort into living the Christian life. That's what Jesus was teaching. Paul, in the same vein, said that those believers who successfully live the Christian life will be rewarded at the judgment seat of Christ. So he says in Corinthians 3, 10 through 15, Paul says, According to the grace of God given to me, like a skilled master builder, I laid a foundation, and someone else is building on it. Each builder must choose with care how to build on it, for no one can lay any foundation other than the one that has been laid. That foundation is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on the foundation with gold or silver or precious stones or wood or hay or straw, the work of each builder will become visible, for the day will dis disclose it, because it will be revealed with fire, and the fire will test what sort of work 
each has done. If what has been built on the foundation survives, the builder will receive a reward. If the work is burned up, the builder will suffer loss. The builder will be saved, but only as through fire. He's talking to us. Build your foundation on the teachings, on the life, on the salvation of Jesus Christ. Let your rock be the rock of salvation of Jesus Christ. Let him be your foundation. So Jesus tells us that those who hear the word but don't make it a part of who they are, who don't make changes to their life, that's building on sand. You have to hear the word and allow the word to change your life. I remember as I learned about Bible study, I learned at, at one point that I had to change the way I read the Bible. I learned that I had to pick up the Bible knowing that I had to be open to what it was saying. So I've learned when I open the Bible to say, Lord, what I learn here, let me be willing to make the change that I learn through your word. We have to be willing to make the change that Jesus Christ calls for us in our lives to build the rough foundation. Not because it's easy, not because it's a shortcut, because the time we put in with Jesus Christ will be absolutely and completely worth it because it is building our foundation with him. If we get serious in our walk, we have to take in what we hear and make it real in our lives. I pray that as God speaks to you this week, that it will cause you to see what he wants you to do and that you, this week, can sit at the feet of Jesus and learn from him.